Houndsman for Heroes is our organization. We started it through our Hound Hunting Club, uh, Fern Ridge Tree Hound Club. We had originally uh, been hosting hunts for veterans, Purple Heart veterans primarily, with Fern Ridge Tree Hound Club. Um, every winter, the first first part of de December, we would host them. And uh, But the only thing that was particular about this organization is it was limited to Purple Heart veterans. In the process of building this event each year, we kind of thought about, well, what if Furniture Treehound Club decided to expand this? What if we decided to build our own organization, our own 501c3, and have the ability to host these veterans on our own? Um, so with that, we had a veteran that was actually from Oregon that we had the opportunity to host, and he had talked about the difference in hosting a Purple Heart veteran versus the veteran community as a whole. So then we broadened the spectrum with Houndsman for Heroes to allow not only just veterans, but then we decided anybody who was fed the spectrum of the word hero, first responders to, you know, firefighters to police, you know, officers and that. So we decided as a whole that it would be better to serve that larger community to make a bigger impact. Yeah, hopefully it'll it'll work out and we can continue to hunt. Guys well, and if you guys are looking for people to take too, yeah, me and him belong to a, a whole freaking organization of combat vets, you know. Yeah, definitely. Anything we can do to help. I got into hound hunting um, back around, it must have been 2001. I met a guy in Prineville that was a um, quadriplegic. Uh, his name was Tim. And Tim, he had hounds, but he had nobody to take him out. So he, he gave me a hound. My first hound ever was named Reuben, this little pup. I named him after my grandpa. He was a, the coolest hound I ever had. Saddleback color, real black with white leggings on him and uh, I took him everywhere with me. I used to drive around and try to find coons and cats to put him on at night, just wasting gas, but it was fun. But old Tim, uh, I took him out. We'd load him up in the truck and he couldn't, couldn't get out of the truck, but we'd roll the window down and listen to the dogs and he'd tell you what he thought they were doing, you know. It just stuck with me, you know, I got hooked. Um, I think hound hunting's had a really bad rap. Um, you know, people in the past have uh, mishandled um, hound hunting, took advantage of it, and um, we've had some stuff closed off to us as far as um, cougar hunting and, and bear hunting, especially here in, in Oregon, uh, for those things. And like uh, right now, cougar, the population has really boomed, and um, it's it's really bad on our deer and elk. I mean, uh, there's estimated 6,500 cougars alone in Oregon, and that's just an estimation. And um, what they could do to the deer numbers, uh, elk numbers, is just unbelievable. Same with the bears. You know, they go around, they, they eat up the calves and stuff on these elk. Um, they just follow the elk herds in their cabin, and they just swallow them up. Oh, 
on three tracks today. If we get one going on a tree, we'll be doing good, huh? First and foremost, Heath and I are people of faith, and um, God calls all of us to serve people around us. That's, you know, we are to serve and, and not ask questions or ask for accolades back to that. And but you, each of us has to serve in our own way, and each of us has to give back in our own way. And so once our Hound Hunting Club kind of began to work with this organization that was doing the Purple Heart Veteran Hunts, um, and he had the opportunity to work with these veterans and see uh, kind of the difference it made to them. We, we had the opportunity to work with some pretty intense veterans that were the Purple Heart guys. We had one gentleman that was just finishing his service as a uh, sniper and talked about spending months on end in a, basically like a foxhole. Uh, and the most exciting day for him in a six months period was getting Top Ramen dropped to him. Just taking into the full scope of what they have been through and being able to spend time with these people. And so seeing the difference that that makes to them and they tell us how thankful they are and how humbled they are by our service. It's like what we did, it's nothing. So if you're grateful for this tiny thing I can do, why shouldn't I do it over and over and over again for the next guy and the guy after him and the person that maybe just had his arm removed and has a prosthetic that he's been getting used to the last few months and is really trying to adjust to life that way. You know, if, if me making you a hot meal and taking you hunting is a way of saying thank you and it means something to you, then, then maybe I need to do it more often. Hunting the vets really hits home to me because when you're when you're hound hunting and you're sitting in a truck all night covering, you know, 100 miles, whatever you're covering, uh, you get to know the guy personally and uh, learn his experiences and what what he's been through and, and who he is as a human, you know, which is pretty important to me. And um, some of these um, things that I have learned. Uh, hunting with the vets and what they've been through for for me uh, I kind of it's overwhelming you don't feel deserving you know you, you feel like oh man this guy did this for me you know why would he do this for me uh, for America for our country it's 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 pretty great so our goal long term was to be to eventually partner with more than just Fern Mystery Hound Club to partner with hound clubs maybe in Maine in Colorado, in you know the Southwest, you know in Tennessee, and it doesn't have to necessarily be bobcat hunting like we do here in the state of Oregon, but to be able to expand that and have the whole hound hunting community across the nation be able to show their support and encouragement, because um, I feel like there's a long sense of healing when it comes to hunting, whether it's anything from bow hunting to running hounds, there is a sense of healing and. It, and it has that same recentering, I think, for people, and we hope will make enough of a difference to see that what they do has meaning and what their purpose, what they what they fought for, what they live for, is is not for lack of support. What we're wanting is the financial support to be able to host these guys, make sure they have the equipment that they need, the uh, transportation the food, the lodging, all covered to where if a club, say, in Tennessee is too small and they don't have the financial backing to rent a cabin and cook, have somebody stay there all week to cook, that we would have the manpower and the ability to say, you know what, you guys take them out hunting and we'll take care of the rest. We'll get them to the event. We'll t make it happen. So the long range goal would be eventually to almost all year round be able to host different events at various times to really be able to make an impact. <laughs> Thinking we should have got a cat. I, I blame Heath. <laughs> <laughs>
Everybody does. That was a trip, though. I love the trip. It was a great time. You right? Great time. Good people. Never done this before, so now I know why they do it.